and welcome back for another round of Duelist from the Clash of Mithron quarterfinals, Clash of Mithron 3, I believe. Um, and yeah, there'll be a fourth one coming uh, very soon. Uh, and I'm once again joined on commentary by Blobs. Yay! Uh, and actually we're casting a game of uh, one of our third old Team War teammates, uh, Kieran. Kieran, obviously the best of all of us. Um... Less so at deck building, apparently, looking at these decks. Um, but definitely very good at playing, uh, which is all that really matters in Duelist, right? Yeah, I obviously remember them for their uh, Zoran gameplay. Always, like, oh, the I sneak hate it. Combos. Oh, so. um, Don't remind me. Yeah, the sneaky interactions there. But yeah, I guess that's not a deck uh, anymore in Duelist 2. Yeah, it doesn't work without a Zoran's Bloodborne spell, uh, which isn't real and never was. So instead, they've moved over to a Songhai deck and a Vanar deck. <laughs> Any thoughts on these? Um, I mean, the Songhai deck is interesting. Like, there, there are some minions in there, uh, like the Celestial Phantom and the Keshrai Fanblade, the Sunseer, are all interesting minions. But the, the thing I'm like looking at is there's no inner focus. Like, you're playing Keshrai Phantom and uh, a Celestial Phantom with no inner focus. Like, Oh, come on, how is this thing supposed to clear an archon yeah, without your interface? Focus, uh, zero mana is so good. Yeah, it works well with um, Lantern Fox, Sunseer. You can get burst with a uh, Tuskwall. I'm, I'm just. Uh. I mean, the Hamon and the uh, Twilight Sorcerer are also like ha Hamon. At least is reasonable with Jux and Mist Dragon Seal, even though Mist Dragon Seal is expensive now. Uh, and Twilight Sorcerer, like, eh. It's as card draw goes. Is it really that good? Uh, but yeah, I mean, minion Songhai is just worse than the burn deck, right? So I, mean, I guess that's my bias show. You know, it's an interesting like switch up on the on the standard. I mean, it's probably got a, a little bit more of a, a longevity, I suppose. Like you're not going to run out of resources as fast. But like even playing the the spell high deck, like a lot of what you can do is just by like the pressure of that you might have a lethal, you're actually just like um, you know grinding resource out of your opponent because they can't yeah because, because you opponent. might kill them from twenty they don't know <laughs> and that means they can't take those kinds of chances and you know have to spend you know their removal as soon as they get it and can't uh, wait for the opportune targets to line up yeah yeah so I mean Kieran might just play a heart seeker and then someone will waste a phoenix fire on it who knows. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, you know, as a Songhai player, I, I've, I'm interested in the innovation and, uh, you know, maybe we'll see it. Um, but uh, their other deck is uh, a Vanar deck, um, a lot of opening gambits and a lot of powerful minions here. I mean, yeah, slightly more reasonable deck, I feel. Um, they are playing the tried and true Jack's Razorback combo. Um, it's a lot more minion heavy than most um, Vanar decks are. Um, but they've got a couple spells in the cryogenesis which only pulls snow chasers it seems um from the aspect of the fox which obviously combos very nicely with uh, dancing blades mm. um and yeah they're like they don't have they have lady lock but they don't have the uh, bone shell barriers which obviously work amazingly well and they're also playing zen rui which uh has a few targets but you're not playing vitruvian where you can blind scorch things so i'll have to see if that actually gets any value yeah, Zen Rui tends like have some like really primo targets like uh, like the Lantern Fox, um, but yeah, some some of the t I mean, if you're just stealing like a Healing Mystic, it's actually pretty good tempo, um, and and the the nice thing about uh, it being a Vanar is your opponent probably doesn't expect it, but with an open deck list, that's obviously uh, not. <laughs> yeah, it, it it would be good if it weren't for the fact that everyone knows you have it. Uh, the other the other card uh, you didn't mention that I've seen rising in stock lately, but you know made my predictions wrong is Prophet of the White Palm. I feel like it's got a really nice synergy here with uh, Jack's True Sight in particular, but also Lady Lock. Um, you know, it can protect your board um, while you lock them down and then set up a Razorback. Yeah, it's definitely a pretty good card. Um, I don't think it gets played much in any other deck, just because like Jax is obviously the main combo. Um, oh, but yeah, obviously. Uh... It, it, it's it's pretty good. Um, does play into Flash Mercantor pretty hard. Um, but other than that, yeah, it, it's it's a decent decent card for stopping things like Tempest and Phoenix Fire. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So that'll be uh, interesting to see which of uh, those decks he uh, picks to bring first against the uh, Kareil, who's running uh, Kmar and K Midrange. 
Uh, yeah, clearly naming the decks after themselves, so no one knows what else they're. Uh, so, so everyone knows that these are Chiral uh, specials. Um, they seem to quite like uh, running random one ofs. Uh, I can see a one of Blood Tear, uh, a one of Metamorphosis, a one of Dancing Blades um, in their Magma deck. Uh, there's only one. Uh, there's actually yeah, there's only one one off in the Vanna, and there's two. There's Rush Core as well. Um, so yeah, they've got these interesting tech cards. Like the Metamorphosis can be very very good if you've already got a Spirit Harvester down, or if you have Flash Spirit Harvester. So uh, maybe we'll be able to get around the uh, Jack's Prophet of the White Palm with uh, with that. Yeah, and uh, speaking again of the Prophet of the White Palm, they're running at both their decks actually. Um, so you know they're a believer as well. We'll have to see if it gets uh, too much value. I doubt it, given like uh, looking at the decks, there is uh, Spiral Technique, Phoenix Fire from Lantern Fox, and Chromatic Hold as uh, out of the of, of spell damage. So you know, yeah, uh, so... I doubt it will be that useful against these players. It is a uh, quite faction uh, dependent, right? Magma really doesn't do spell damage, but um, Lion Iron and Songhai uh, quite do. Yeah, Songhai usually does, but apparently Kieran. Not a fan of that kind of uh, that kind of gameplay. It's down with that sort of thing. Yeah. All right then, should we look at the actual game? We've uh, rambled enough. We got Magma versus Songhai. All right, All right. let's get into it. Is Kyril going first? Does have a two drop? Always good to see. And that two drop is the premiere in Kujata. And then Kieran. Has the uh, has the suns here? <laughs> Isn't choosing to play it front. Is wanting to get some value out of the healing here. Uh, could have played it on the tile and uh, heartseeker as well. Yeah. Um, but doesn't seem to want to do that. Are we going to see? I'm trying to curious about the ordering here. Um, because like vindicator and lady lock both want to go first. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think that rushing the lady lock is actually too important. So. Uh... Yeah, okay. This this sequencing makes sense to me. Oh, okay. And we have the Greater Fortune. This is five mana. It's a very nice turn, actually. Um, and with the provoke from the Lady Lock, there is a uh, no way of getting onto this uh, four three provoke Vindicator. So this is a very nice turn for Karen. No, not for Karen. For Kyril. Have to see if Karen has anything they can do. I mean, they can drop the Keshrai Flam Fan Blade. Um, or is it just we play a? Uh, Celestial Phantom and a Heartseeker and punch the 2 2 and just hope that they're not going to get bullied too hard <laughs> by this uh, very accelerated Magma board that can go down and get to 5 mana and possibly play a Mechantor. Yep, this has worked out really nicely for Kirill. Like, there, there actually is a risk with the um, turn 1 Kajata against Songhai because they can quite easily jacks it back in, but. Yeah. Um, you know, when it doesn't die, this is the kind of thing it can do. Uh, and, uh... Oh, and, and even has the Rush uh, Prophet to stop spell damage. Um, which, uh, you know, doing pretty well. And chooses to trade in the Kajata as well. Feels that uh, with the hand getting pretty empty, um, they don't really need uh, that extra acceleration. So, yeah, uh, doing pretty well for the Elves. Cho obviously, choose not to punch in. Um, wouldn't do them very much good. Yeah, you don't lose your Vindicator. Um, you know, eight and now, is good. Oh, do you just drop the 8-8 eight eight and be sad because you can't even play around uh, Frenzy? Because, I mean, if you trade in the 2-2, two two, uh, I, I suppose you can trade in the Tusk Ball to the 4-3 and punch out the uh, Mechantor. Oh, choosing not to go for the Mechantor. Running away. And leaving it up, uh, Kyril just drops a, a veteran Silthar, I assume, uh, just because uh, Songha really struggles to deal with this thing. Like, you need a Phoenix Fire to punch and a Ghost Lightning, uh, or you can I suppose you can just have an Onyx Bear Seal. Yeah, there, there's another card that uh, Kieran isn't running, which is Saber Spine Seal, um, which you know does a pretty good job of dealing with five HP things, um, and it's fairly cheap. But um... Yeah, you still would need something to clear the egg in that situation as well. And yeah, we uh, are again in the situation. Like, Kieran can Onyx Bear Seal, um, 
but then would have nothing to do. So is choosing instead to go for the slightly more aggressive route of uh, dropping the Hammond Blade Seeker. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> they do have a spiral technique in hand, um, but with their dwindling HP and the fact that Chiral is still full, like it hasn't taken any damage so far, uh, I get the feeling that they're not going to have any issues uh, here. Uh, we're going to see the other order with Vindicator first. That is, it's a tricky decision. Okay, we are. We're going to get the uh, Rush Provoke. Are we? I don't know. Oh, we're not. Okay, we're just saving the Laylock for a later turn. I think that makes sense, actually. Like, yeah, you can get out of turn while you're playing much more uh, critical minions on it, right? Yeah, it looks like we're just going to have a... Uh... On expect seal and then clear the 4 3 with the Hamon Bladeseeker, player Keshrai. Um, but yeah, obviously, the thing with Hamon Bladeseeker is uh, it does hurt the general who played it, so Kieran is slowly killing himself. Uh, and obviously, Kyrul is completely okay with that. Ah, Especially if they can just mechantle their face and run away. Uh, I think they mechantle the uh, 5 4 and the general and run. Yeah, I don't. I think you do kill the Hamon. I know it's hurting Kieran, but they do run uh, three Mist Dragons and three Jaxes. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, okay. I mean, yes, that's probably correct. But if you're going for like, oh, I, I want to win as soon as I can because this is Songhai, um, this will put Kieran down to five, yeah. uh, which is very close to uh, not being alive anymore. <laughs> it really is. Uh, Kieran's going to play that Sunseer and then put a killing edge on it. And, uh... Yeah, and then have no inner focus, so can't even heal. Uh, we likely are going to see a juxtaposition here. Um, juxtaposition, double killing edge, and a Tusk War would be a lot of damage. Especially given the Hamon can just run all the way to the, to the edge of the board there. Yeah, that'll take the Mechanter out of the, uh, the game for a fair while. Uh, yeah, it'll, it'll take the mechanter out of the game basically for the rest of the game. Uh, I don't see this lasting the five turns it'll take it to get there. The double killing edge. Uh, now, now we're wor we're, we're worried. Uh, that's basically the same thing would have happened um, if the cash row was left up. Uh, but still, uh, that is a sixteen attack unit hitting you in the face, uh, and there is a spiral technique in hand. Which will kill you next turn. So, do you have a Mechantor? Because that will end the game right here. No. No Mechantors. Um. It is dead now. It looks pretty dead, doesn't it? Yeah, it's funny how the game can turn quite quickly like that. <laughs> yeah, it turned like so fast there. Yeah, that was full HP, and now. <laughs> yeah, there's there's nothing really to be done here. Uh, I, I think the like, if Kyrel had on that uh, turn played um, what's it called? Uh, I'm struggling now. Um, I had played the Lady Lock uh, so right. that it could get rushed. Um, maybe there would have been a chance there because it could have got a couple hits in. But yeah, Spiral Technique doesn't care about Provoke, and uh, yeah, that's a win for Kieran. Despite how doomed it was looking for most of the game. Yeah, the Hamon uh, did work there, right? It's just a big minion that Magma couldn't remove, and uh, then Songhai shenanigans happened, and uh, that's what you got to be careful of. 